Here's the second part of the unit circle. Now we're going to look at the points x, y along the unit circle, along that circumference of the unit circle. Okay, here's where we left off last time. We have our unit circle populated with our degrees and our radians for our critical angles. Well now you've noticed in the key I have coordinates cosine of theta and sine of theta. What does that mean? Well, if you remember from a previous lecture, on a unit circle, we found that the sine of theta was equal to the sine opposite over the hypotenuse, or y over 1, or just y. And then cosine of that angle theta was equal to x. Well, in terms of x comma y then, instead of writing that point as x comma y, I can write it as cosine theta, sine theta. Notice cosine comes first and then sine. That sometimes confuses students. So, if I go back to my large unit circle, and if I look at my first point at angle 0, well at that point, x is equal to, well x is equal to 1. We've said that this is a unit circle, so its radius is 1. But the y value, well that's 0. So that is simply the point 1 comma 0. So that tells us the cosine of 0 degrees is equal to 1, and the sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0. We'll be using this when it comes to graphing our trig functions later on. Well, let's do our other three easy angles. At 90 degrees, well that point is 0 comma 1, x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. At 180 degrees, x is equal to negative 1, and y is equal to 0, so that's the point negative 1 comma 0. At 270 degrees, we have x equals 0 and y equals negative 1, so we have the point 0 comma negative 1. Well, we can also look at tangent. I'm only going to look at two different examples for tangent, because if we remember, tangent is just equal to y divided by x. I don't also need to write tangent since I already have things in terms of x and y. Well, let's do two examples. Let's first of all look at the point 1 comma 0. If tangent of theta is equal to y over x, then tangent of 0 degrees is just equal to 0 over 1, or 0. Alright, let's look at 90 degrees. The tangent of 90 degrees is, let's see, that's the point 0 comma 1, so x is 0, y is 1, so the tangent of 90 degrees would be 1 divided by 0. And we're not allowed to divide by 0, so the tangent at 90 degrees is actually undefined. Cosine and sine behave very nicely. However, because there's the possibility of dividing by 0, tangent you have to watch out for. But as I said, talking about this unit circle, we're only going to focus on sine and cosine. Alright, so we have our four easy angles. Now let's look at the angles 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. Let's start out with 45 degrees. What are the x, y coordinates for 45 degrees? That point, x comma y, is just cosine of 45 degrees comma sine of 45 degrees. Well, hopefully, you remember that special angle I asked you to memorize. If you remember the 1, 1 square root of 2 triangle, then you should remember the sine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2, as is the cosine of 45 degrees. So that means that point would simply be square root of 2 over 2, comma square root of 2 over 2. Alright, 30 and 60 degrees, that's the other special triangle I asked you to memorize. Let's first look at 30 degrees. If I want my point x, y, cosine of 30 degrees comma sine of 30 degrees, then I would have square root of 3 over 2, that's the cosine of 30 degrees, comma 1 half. If I go back to 60 degrees now, sine of 60 degrees is square root of 3 over 2, cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half, so in terms of x and y, I'll have 60 degrees, that point being 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Oof, that was a lot of work for just one quadrant. Now I have to worry about my other quadrants. Really, the other quadrants aren't that difficult once I remember whether or not the trig function is positive or negative in that quadrant. 
For instance, let's take 135 degrees. That's an angle with a reference angle of 45 degrees. That means the sine of 135 degrees and the cosine of 135 degrees is just equal to the sine and cosine of 45 degrees after you take into account the sine. Well, in quadrant two, sine is positive and cosine is negative. So if for 45 degrees I have square root of two over two comma square root of two over two, I'm going to expect 135 degrees to give me the point negative square root of two over two comma positive square root of two over two. Cosine is negative in this quadrant and the sine is positive. And the same will go for 120 degrees and 150 degrees. It's the same values as the first quadrant, but this cosine is negative. In quadrant three, both the sine and the cosine are negative, so we simply use the same values, but both of them are negative numbers now. For instance, for 225 degrees, we have negative square root of two over two and negative square root of two over two. Quadrant four, cosine is positive, so the x term will be positive and the y term will be negative. Remember, being able to quickly sketch this unit circle will make doing your homework and taking exams much, much easier. First start off with the degrees, then fill in the radians, then once you remember the trig functions for those two special triangles, the 45, 45, 90 triangle and the 30, 60, 90 triangle, you should be able to quickly write down the x, y value for all these points on the unit circle. And that concludes talking about the unit circle. We've now talked about finding the points x, y along the unit circle.